Welcome to the show, Karin. Thank you very much for taking this time out and coming and talking to us about Code Yobi. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong, but uh, it's a coding school that you are a part of. Uh, before we get into that, can you just tell us about yourself, who you are, and what you do at the moment? Mm -hmm. Thank you, first of all, for having me. So, I'm the co-director of Code Yobi, okay. and uh, for the last nine years, I've mm -hmm. been involved in the Estonia startup scene. Okay. So I work for the Estonian Business Angels Network mm -hmm. that basically gathers private investors. Mm -hmm. So I got involved with the, all the startup scene and mm -hmm. understanding more about what the investing is about and so on. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I was working for the European Innovation Academy, okay. which meant that we were organizing trainings for students all over, all over the world and teaching them within 15 days how to go from an idea to actually product or service to show to investors. Okay. And uh, now I'm, uh, I'm running the school. Okay, it's really interesting. You mentioned that you were involved in the European Innovation uh, Academy. Academy. Okay, but in fifteen days, how how it was working? Like in fifteen days, were the students able to come up with an idea and then a full project plan as well? Before we get into code, mm -hmm. I just want to understand that. That seems like quite interesting to me. Yeah, basically, what we did uh, that we were teaching them all the necessary steps that you have to do to build a startup. Okay. So first of all that you have to focus on a problem, you have to validate if it's actually a problem. Mm -hmm. So we sent them on the streets, they had to talk to the customers or companies, mm -hmm. uh, then they had to like validate them, then they had mm -hmm. to build an MVP, do some marketing and so okay. on. So they went through all these steps and also had to prepare a pitch and actually show it to the investors. Okay. So the, the companies were at different levels. Some of them did have like a functional product or a service. Some of them they just have a pitch deck, mm -hmm. but it was more about just teaching the methodology okay. and like showing them what do you have to do to make sure that if you actually start working on a startup, it becomes a success. Uh -huh. There were some success stories, but it was more about yeah, this kind of education experience. Okay. And also because we had students all around the world from okay. different universities, we put them in the teams with students from different schools. Okay. So they couldn't form a team with just the students from their school. Oh. So it was again like an international experience for them yeah. and having to learn how to work with people from different cultures and different okay. backgrounds. Uh -huh. uh, because there was like business people, marketing, software engineers, design and all that. Yeah. So they had to create a team and work for three weeks together. Okay, that's really, well, that's really interesting. So do you think because of that you got into this project as well? How did you get into this project? I think just being involved in the Stone and Startup ecosystem uh -huh. is the reason uh, because I knew some of the founders of Kodioti. So how the school started was that there's eight Estonian entrepreneurs mm -hmm. uh, who, who knew from their experience that there's a huge lack of software engineers. Okay. And although universities, vocational education is doing a good job and teaching quite a lot of them, yeah. the, need is, the need keeps growing. So yeah. our startups keep growing, our traditional uh, traditional economy keeps growing, so we need more software engineers. And instead of just complaining about it, they decided to uh, start a new school that okay. will teach them. So it was end of, uh, I think, end of 2020. Yeah. I saw that uh, David Hendrikus, who was one of the founders of WISE, Martin Willig, who was founder of uh, Coil, Marek Gisa, who was one of the most well-known investors in Estonia, okay. and all the others also, that uh, they're launching a the school and it sounded so exciting. Yeah. And then they started looking for head of school. Okay. Uh, to be honest, in the beginning, that seemed something crazy. Yeah. And uh, I was like, yeah, I can't dare to apply yeah. for that. Yeah. But then we started talking with one of my colleagues from the European Innovation Academy. Okay. So uh, we had been working together for three years. Yeah. We worked really well together. And then we came up with an idea because it's a different kind of school. Yeah. It could also have a different kind of management model. Yeah. So we decided to apply together. Uh -huh. We had to explain that to the HR company first, mm -hmm. to the founders, to explain yeah. to them that they were looking for, you know, one head of school, like, why should they get two? Okay. Uh, but it was a quite long process, uh -huh. and in the end, they, they, it, we were chosen, and then we started running the school together. Okay. So the idea generated from the need of having more, uh, how to say, uh, industry or yeah, industry-ready workforce. Mm -hmm. Did I understand? Exactly. It? So uh, there's there's such a huge need for software engineers mm -hmm. or IT specialists. Yeah. There's like different kind of research. That yeah. In Estonia, only in Estonia, we're talking about like eight thousand to ten thousand jobs uh -huh. that need to be filled in the next few years. Okay. And that's only our country. That's one point three million. Yeah. But if you talk globally, I think coding is one of the future skills that. Uh, if you know how to code, you will yeah. not run out of uh, job opportunities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Okay, so the main aim, which is my next question as well, so the main aim of this initiative is to prepare the workforce which is employable and which is serving the needs of the future opportunities that would be available in the next few years, correct? Exactly. So basically, we are using a different kind of methodology. Yeah. So we don't have any teachers, we don't okay. have any classes. We have this kind of self-learning methodology, mm -hmm. which means it's a computer program. It mm -hmm. kind of reminds a bit like a computer game. Mm -hmm. And the students have really practical tasks there. Okay. So they have to, uh, how to learn how to write code is by writing code. Okay. So they have to solve those tasks and they do it really practically. And yet the goal is that they, through this two-year program, to okay. learn really practical skills that will make them uh, highly employable. Okay. And uh, we also have like, more than 30 partners in our school, and the goal of them is that they are interested in hiring them. Okay. And uh, what also makes our school different is that uh, everybody who's above 18 is, is invited. So in that sense, it can be, for some of them, it's the first education they get straight from high school, but for some people it's a way for them to do some retraining mm -hmm. and learn new skills. Uh -huh. So, for example, if they've had some education beforehand, yeah. maybe had some career, and now want to step into IT world, they can do that at four years in. Okay, right. So, if you are, if anyone is eighteen years old, they can apply for this opportunity. Yes. Okay, and I, I will talk about it later as well. But the applications are, ex, are ex, accepted twice a year, right? Or it's just once a year? Uh, basically, we have quite a long application period, mm -hmm. so we're going to open it in the beginning of next year again. Okay. And uh, the application process is also a bit different. Okay. So uh, basically, we're gonna start them in like February, March, and for like three, four months, this, uh, everybody who wants to apply can do it. But it's not just that you know you fill in application. Yeah. So the first step is that you have to play a game online. That's an hour and a half. And the, the, the goal of the game is that it tests your logics. Yeah. So basically the game doesn't have many instructions. Yeah. You have to figure out yourself what you have to do. Mm -hmm. You also can't pause it, so you have to do it straight away. Yeah. So it's already this kind of first test if you're able to put in the commitment mm -hmm. that you play the game. Uh -huh. And then that's the first step. And the next step is that we invite the best ones from there to three weeks uh, testing period. We call okay. it the selection sprint. Uh, how that works is that from day one, they start writing code. So again, like we throw them into the methodology, uh, we throw them into coding, yeah. and uh, they start understanding like, if, if this is for them, if they like the field, if they like the program, if they like the people around them. Okay. And also during the last week, they have to do it at home. So they, they also have okay. to test if they can study remotely. Mm -hmm. So it's like this uh, really intense three-week period. Okay. Uh, they understand what the school is about, if it works for them. And based on those results, we, we select the best ones to actually get into the school. But okay. uh, they have like a quite long process before yeah. the school. Yeah. But the goal of it is that uh, the students actually get into school. They know what they're getting themselves into. They yeah. know how they will be studying. They know with whom they will be studying. So they have like a better understanding to make yeah. an educated decision of what they want to do. Okay, All right. I completely agree with the test because I did try it myself. The Obviously, I just wanted to see how it goes, and you're completely right. There were no instructions. I didn't know what to do. I was just banging my head, trying to search info about it. But yeah, in the end, I didn't get a call. That means I just didn't do well on the test. It's completely okay. As you mentioned, a few names, wise founders, uh, bold founders, and other uh, you know well-known investors in Estonia are part of it. But in the beginning, what was the first group of entrepreneurs who actually were there building this idea and discussing it with others. Can you tell us about that? So the idea actually came from Mark Kisa, as I mentioned, okay. that, uh, one of the most well-known investors in Estonia. And uh, the methodology that we're using, that was developed in France in about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So there, there are other similar schools around the okay. world. And he's, uh, Mark's son went to the test period in San Francisco. Oh. So they have like a similar methodology, how to choose the students. And his son went there and he was super excited about it, and he loved it, and he kept telling his father about it, yeah. that the, this, this was like a life-changing experience for them. Yeah. His son did not go to school, he wanted okay. to study something else, mm -hmm. but that's kind of got Mark thinking that, why don't we have something like that in Estonia? Yeah. And he's been really passionate about education for a long, long time, yeah. and that you know education is something that we haven't changed in a really long time, but yeah. we need to find new ways how to teach people, because mm -hmm. people are studying differently. Yeah. So that's uh, he was the first one who started talking about this idea, mm -hmm. and the Estonia startup ecosystem is a very close-knit community. Mm -hmm. So he started telling other people about this idea, 
and got the other like-minded people around them who were like, okay, let's do this. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I think that the main goal was that they saw some problem that needs to be solved in Estonia, uh -huh. and they just uh, let's let's do something about it. Let's okay. not just like talk about it, but let's actually do something about it. Okay. So yeah, so there's eight founders, and also when they started with the idea. Uh, they also got some government funding okay. because we are renovating the building in Jofi. So Jofi is uh, in Ida Viruma, which is the northeastern part of Estonia. Yeah. And uh, the government is supporting some of the renovation of the building because okay. it's, a, it's a huge five floor building that uh -huh. will be uh, hopefully ready this autumn. Okay. So uh, obviously it's, it's not the cheapest thing to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think that's already a really good sign because government decided to support this project before before there was a team, yeah. before there was uh, any students, yeah. but I think they also they believe that uh, if this group of founders starts doing something, yeah. it's something that will hopefully succeed. Yeah, yeah, and no, I completely agree because Estonia is a small country, and the names that you are, mm -hmm. you know, that are involved in this project are the big names in Estonia, well-known names. So obviously, government would have listened to them as well, and it's really nice that the government is also involved in this private project, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, so you just spoke about uh, the selection procedure. Can you just take us through the steps once again? And are there any prerequisites that the students or the candidates must have to be eligible for this program? Mm -hmm. So to apply, you have to be 18 at least. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to have basic education. So okay. in Estonia, that means ninth grade education, which is also mandatory. Uh, ninth grade, you said? Ninth grade, okay. yes. And at the moment also, you have to have a living permit for Estonia okay. if you want to study in the school because we're not able to provide living permits for the students. Okay. And then the first step is to uh, go to our website, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, you will find the application apply now button there that will lead you to the games. Yeah. Then uh, do the best you can in the games. Yeah. And then if you're if you're good enough, you'll be invited to the selection sprint okay. and hopefully get into a school. Okay. So it is a multi-step one, but yeah. I think the, the prerequisites are uh, are not too high, yeah. so everybody who's interested, yeah. they can come and uh, come and join us. So prerequisites mainly are students should have ninth grade education. Yeah. They should be having residence permit uh, of Estonia if mm -hmm. it's uh, foreigners wants to be part of it, and uh, they have to clear the tests. Yeah, and they have to be eighteen. All right, now we've spoken about the selection procedure. Uh, can you tell us about the structure of the program as well? Like year, as you said, it's a two-year program, but can you tell us about how? how it is divided into these two years? Yeah, so basically that two years is also divided into two parts. Mm -hmm. uh, first part is the first 18 months. Yeah. And during that time, the students go through three programming languages. Okay. They start with Golang, then they continue with JavaScript, and then they follow up with Rust. All these languages, they have six months to study it. Okay. And the how, how it works is that they have different projects okay. in that language. Uh, the first ones are a bit smaller ones, uh, most of them are with other people, so they actually have to work in a team. Okay. The team size is from two people to sixteen people. Okay. So it's it's a bit uh, this kind of that we're mimicking what it would be like to work afterwards. Okay. Because you have to work with other people. You have to you know map out the projects, what you're gonna yeah. do, who's gonna do what. Yeah. And that's what they have to do in the study program. Okay. And all these languages start uh, again this with this uh, few weeks intense period. Mm -hmm. Uh, in French, it's called the Vicente, so a pool, mm -hmm. which means that they're kind of like thrown into the language, okay. and then they have the bigger, bigger projects to follow up. Okay. So, uh, with the first 18 months, they go through that. It is possible to move faster. Okay. We can already see it with our first class that there are some students who are moving faster. Okay. So, the, the, the idea is that it is self-paced. Mm -hmm. So, like you, if you're done with the tasks, you can move to the next one. You don't okay. have to wait for the other students or wait for exams or courses to finish. So you can you can do it, do it either faster or slower depending okay. on uh, on the person. For the last six months of specialization, uh, for example, like cybersecurity, mobile apps, and so on. And this is also the part where we're developing some additional tasks with our partners. Okay. Because as I mentioned beforehand, we have about thirty companies yeah. who are supporting the school, and as they want to hire the students, okay. we also want to make sure that when they go through the program they understand how these companies work. Yeah. So with these companies, we are developing some additional tasks okay. or additional modules, so the students could understand like, what kind of languages they're using, what kind of tasks they will be doing, and they have a chance to check it out already in school, so to make, again, a bit more educated decision when it comes to them choosing their future employer. 
Okay. That's really interesting. So that means before the students finish, they kind of have uh, a broader idea that the companies that they can work with and also the companies which are looking for students in the same with the same skill set, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. And mm -hmm. also in addition to just these kind of technical skills, what we're doing is that we have different kind of talk talks and okay. we have kind of training days. So where the companies either come to a school or the, okay. the students go to the companies. Mm -hmm. So again, to make, help them understand how, how do these companies work? What kind of people work there? How do the teams work there? Mm -hmm. What do they focus on? So they have a better understanding before they actually start applying the jobs. Mm -hmm. Because I think quite often people, you know, you, you see an ad in CV online or LinkedIn, this sounds fun, but you don't know much about the background. Yeah. Like you can Google it yeah. and see what's online, but you don't actually have the interaction with the people. Mm -hmm. So we want to bring the partners and the students as close together as possible. Mm -hmm. So to make sure that they, they have a better idea of what's mm -hmm. going on, before they start choosing their career. Mm -hmm. And hopefully then they'll find a company that they would really love. Okay, that's really interesting. One other, uh, other thing I wanted to ask, you said like uh, uh, if students are finishing their projects, they can just go ahead and keep doing it. So does that mean there are no like, like semester-wise exams or yearly exams that they have to pass? So it's just mainly project work. They just finish, keep finishing projects and they keep moving on, right? Yeah, so it's project-based. And uh, as I mentioned, like when they start with the new language, they have yeah. this like a few week more intense period. And uh, there they have like smaller tasks. They can also have some exams in there. Okay. But yeah, basically it's project based. It's very practical. So like all the learning is uh, done through actually writing the code. Okay, right. And in case they need any, I don't know, uh, books to read so they can just go to any library mm -hmm. and get the books by themselves. But, yeah. but the pairs or maybe the companies, uh, uh, I don't know, the engineers or PMs, they may also help them by suggesting them, okay, you can read this material? Yeah, uh, they quite often when we have the talks, for example, then yeah. they're recommending something like that. Uh, we also started with code reviews, okay. where either like students show how they saw the tasks, or for example, uh, engineers from our partner companies, they would show like how they would solve a certain tasks. Okay. And then they also recommend like additional materials what the students can be using. Uh, students have developed their own wiki, so Wikipedia for our students, yeah. where they put like different kind of materials, and there's like yeah ways how to if somebody finds something interesting and valuable that they share with others. So okay. we have like a huge Discord server where all the students are there. So it's an easy way for them to communicate and share everything with everybody. Okay, so it means you guys have created a kind of an ecosystem where learners and the teach, not the teachers, the trainers or the experienced uh, coders or programmers are helping these mm -hmm. new trainings as well. That's really, really interesting. Just spoke about the selection procedure. If you can tell me now, like, how many students applied in the first year, or how was the response? So last year, when we had the first application period, we had 3,300 people uh -huh. who actually went through the online game. Uh -huh. So that means that they actually played, uh, played, the, played the online test that yeah. they had to. And from there, we invited up to 600 to the selection okay. sprint. All right. And we accepted a bit more than 200 students. Okay, so in the end, the final number of students who made it in the program out of the total was close to 8 to 10 percent. Mm -hmm. I think because uh, this kind of methodology really works for some, some yeah. certain type of people, but it doesn't work for anybody. Yeah. anybody. Mm -hmm. And or, like also this year when we had our second yeah. round of application, uh, we had more than 3,400 candidates. Okay. And uh, we've invited the sprints about the same, uh, same amount of people. Okay. But we can already see that compared to first year, uh, the people have done like more background research and they understand more what they're getting themselves into. Because okay. you know, first year there's there's a lot of hype. Uh -huh. We were all over the news all the time. Mm -hmm. And this year it's more about people who actually okay, like I really want to learn how to code. I think this methodology will work for me. Yeah. They do like background research, mm -hmm. they study the go land beforehand, yeah. they start. So it's like a bit different kind of different kind of group. Mm -hmm. But again like I think a really motivated group of people that we can see from this year. Okay, so you kind of answered my second question as well, because I wanted to know about this year, so you answered that as well. And, and the, the positive impact of this program in the, in the student community and more students are applying with the more mindset that they have, if they want to get into this, this is what it takes, and uh, they are willing to take that uh, uh, time and uh, finish this program. Yeah, I think so, for sure. Mm -hmm. I think it's also because uh, we've been able to explain a bit more, a better, uh -huh. like how the program works, 
uh, with our current students yeah. and like uh, we have like our own podcast and also social media and so on yeah. so yeah like it's a better understanding because i think last year when we said it's like you know self-learning no teachers yeah. It, it can be like, how do you teach something yeah. without teachers? Yeah. But now I think the students understand a bit more. So yeah, like uh, I would say that this year there was less people who just wanted to test out the games or the selection sprint just for testing it. And now it was more about people who actually want to get into school and want to come study and are mm -hmm. really interested in the field. Okay, right. And now as the program started last year, uh, if you have any info on it, do you have any dropouts after like six months or a year, mm -hmm. like any students dropped out? So basically our students have about like a three month trial period okay. where, where they can leave the school. Uh, the dropout rate is around like 17-18% in the first okay. year. Right. And uh, what was the main reason was that uh, our students can either study on site. So at the moment we're in Silama because our building in Ilfi is not ready or they can study remotely. Okay. And most of the students who actually left the program were the ones who were studying remotely. Okay. So after the selection sprint, the very intense period, you know, everybody's super hyped, you work really well with other people, yeah. went home and it was hard for them to find the motivation. Okay. Or like uh, hard to get back on the back, back on the horse basically. Yeah. Uh, so like that was the main reason why uh, the students left. And this is also why we have done some changes this year. So as I mentioned beforehand, now the selection sprint is two weeks on site and the third week uh, remotely. Okay. So they already have to test out what it's like to work from home. Yeah. So now if they make the decision, if they want to study at home, they already know that if they were able to do it, or does it work better for them to study in the school uh, on site, or like figure out other ways how to get to together with other students and do it together. Uh -huh. So like I expect to the dropout rate to actually go lower. Okay. Uh, I know that uh, compared to traditional education, especially like IT education, yeah. that 17-18% is quite low. Yeah. But I want to get it lower. I want yeah, to get it to sure. like maximum 10%. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully we will we will get it a bit lower this year and uh, yeah. Yeah, like it will be like a positive trend in that sense. Okay, you just okay. mentioned about the remote learning. But do you guys have any plan of offering this program like if students want to be in the school for throughout the program. Do you have any plans like that or you are just encouraging students and making them understand in the beginning that it's going to be a remote program and you have to work from your home or a different town you, you are in? Basically, they have, they have an option to work in the school. So on okay. site, it's, it's, their, it's their decision if they want to do it there like full time in the, in the school building or if they want to study from home. So they, they have that option already. But uh, I think like in the beginning when we started with the school, the, goal, the, the plan was that uh, everybody was studying on site in the school, full time, live there, basically move to Itaviruma, which is like 200 kilometers away from uh, Tallinn. But when we had the first selection sprint and we saw the students who got there, it was not only you know, 18 year olds who came straight from high school or, or basic education. We had people from 18 to 16. Okay. So it means that there's people who have families, who might have their own yeah. companies, who have a house loan or something like that. Yeah. So although they really want to study, they want to get a new career, it's just not possible for them to fully move away. Yeah. So yeah. that's the reason last summer we, we made the decision that, okay, you can also study remotely. Okay. Uh, but yeah, with the remote students, I think the first year was a big learning lesson for us. Yeah. And there's still ways how we can make it better to make sure that... Uh, all the students uh, get like, that even if they're studying remotely that they still feel that they're part of the community and yeah. that we have like other options for them to get together yeah. and uh, study together because this kind of peer-to-peer -peer learning it is important that they actually still also meet other physical so yeah. now it, it's the second year that uh, you guys are doing it so what are your plans for next three to five years so at the moment we're still in Yofi so mm -hmm. basically the city of Viroma yeah. What we want to do is that we want to open new hubs all okay. around Estonia. And what I mean by hub is this kind of smaller locations. Okay. So that will have like 30 to 50 students. So basically, as I mentioned, that it's so important that people will still meet and yeah. have a chance to, uh, chance to meet each other and have a base for that. So that's the reason we want to have these in different parts of Estonia. So students who are from that region... They will have like a gold hub yeah. where they could go to in the southern part, in the eastern part, in the western part, okay. and so on. So that is our plan. And also we want to definitely increase the students. Okay. So it's not a five-year plan, but in 10 years we would want to accept 2,000 students per year. Okay. Not only from Estonia, also from other countries, neighboring countries. 
and also hopefully from further so that people can actually come here and study study in Estonia. Mm -hmm. But uh, considering our founders and like what they have achieved in the life yeah, already, yeah. like definitely our plans are are quite big. Okay. Really interesting. Now I have a couple of more questions. So you're saying uh, you want to have more hubs where mm -hmm. 30 to 50 students can come in. How many hubs uh, are you planning at the moment? Like maybe uh, two or three in Tallinn, because Tallinn is a place where, I don't know, 40% of the population of Estonia is living. So you're planning more in Tallinn than in Tartu, or how are you planning that? Actually, we're not planning to have any in Tallinn or Tartu. So, oh, why is that? Uh, what, the, what the goal with the code Yofi and code Dida Vrava was that Estonia is so small. Yeah. Like, so much of everything is focused only in Tallinn or Tartu. Okay. But Estonia is too small to do that. Because yeah. like, it takes like two hours to go to Yofi. Uh, it takes like, uh, it's the same time as it takes from Tallinn to go to Tartu. So what we want to do with halves also is again to put them in smaller cities. So to give people in that area other opportunities. Okay. Uh, so because I think again coding is something that if you know how to do it, you can work remotely for any company in Estonia, any company in the US and so yeah, on. Yeah. So kind of grow Estonia a bit bigger than yeah. just Tallinn, I would say. Yeah. So yeah, like we're just talking with some cities in the southern part of Estonia okay. and also in the western part and so on. So uh -huh. that, that's our goal to make the hubs also in smaller cities. Okay. So you just mentioned that you want to have students from outside of Estonia as well. And if they, they come to Estonia for this program, obviously they would need residence permit and everything. So at that moment, would you start charging fee as well or it would stay free for let's say, I don't know, for a foreseeable future. What do you think? The goal with school is that it will be free. Okay. So like we don't want to put any kind of payment that the students will have to okay. pay for the education. Uh -huh. uh, with the resident permit, we we need to work with the education ministry. Mm -hmm. So hopefully in the future, we will be able to provide that to students. Okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, there is just a lot of legal things that yeah. come into yeah. play in that yeah. one. Yeah. But yeah, like for sure, like we want to keep the school for free because that's the goal of it, that uh, people get to learn new skills and that it's accessible. Mm -hmm. So that everybody who's willing to put in the effort and put in the time will be able to learn how to code and create a new future for themselves. Yeah, makes sense. It's really, really interesting. I'm sorry, I'm just asking so many questions. The more information I'm finding about the school, the more questions that I have, because it's really, really innovative and like out of the box thinking that uh, this group is, uh, you know, following at the moment. Okay, so next I want to know, you already have, uh, from last year, more than 200 students starting and studying in this program. So do you have any success stories that you can share, or maybe any students, a group of students who got, already had job offers from different companies uh, from Estonia? We've had quite a few students who actually who did internships this summer. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, like in Pipe Prime and LHV and so on. Okay. Uh, there's uh, two students who are going to start working in Proexpert and studying at the same time. So there's there's actually quite a few examples. Uh -huh. We do encourage the students to not start working full time yet. Okay. So if it's possible for them to focus fully on studying, it's definitely easier yeah. because trying to work full time and study full time, yeah. obviously it requires really good time management skills and yeah. all that. So if it's possible, like uh, yeah, we, we tell them to finish the school first, do it as quickly as possible, yeah. and then start working. But uh, so far we've gotten really good feedback. We just had a workshop at Vice uh, okay. last week. Yeah, we've gotten quite a lot of good feedback from different companies when mm -hmm. we had like workshops with the with their employees where yeah. our students had to solve different kind of tasks so mm -hmm. hopefully that shows that the, the the level they get from the school is what the Estonian workforce needs, needs that means that whatever the school is teaching is working and is needed in the market and this internship showed that so you have your uh, your result is proven at the moment, in a sense. Well, we haven't had the first class graduating yet, so yeah. that's the reason. Like, uh, I don't want to be too optimistic yet, yeah. because yeah. but I, I am very positively minded, and I think we have a really amazing first group of students. I think we're going to have a really amazing second class of students, mm -hmm. and I do expect uh, great things from them, mm -hmm. both in terms of where they go to work, but I also expect that some of them will be, uh, become entrepreneurs, maybe yeah. build uh, future unicorns of Estonia. Yeah. So sure. really looking forward to seeing like what they will achieve. So my next question is that you have a set curriculum for these two years. What are your plans to updating it? Like, are you going to update it every year, or if the market, or if the market uh, needs it, how are you going to update the curriculum? 
So that's the that's the work that we're doing with the partners. Mm -hmm. So as I mentioned beforehand in the program, the last six months is the specialization. Yeah. And there we can add the new tasks with our partners. Mm -hmm. And this is also the part that we want to uh, keep updating and putting like new tasks in there. But also I think it's important to mention that the whole idea of the program is also it's not about you know the specific languages that they learn to write. It's more about also learning to learn. Because I think programming is again something that even if you have studied for a bit, you will never be done. Because, you know, the, the coding languages, like the, there's new ones coming up that become yeah. more and more popular. You, but you need to understand how you would approach if you need to learn a new language. And uh, what are the first steps and also like what are the key differences and so on. And that will make you a successful uh, coder in the future. Mm -hmm. And also that you just don't, uh, like you don't give up in that sense. That you, you keep being curious and yeah. looking around like what's happening and... Well, what is what is the new innovation in technology and then following those okay so what i understand is you are trying to give them the basic knowledge of the coding program that they may use everywhere mm -hmm. then in the last six months the specialization but at the same time you're trying to develop the mindset mm -hmm. that they can they understand that if they have to learn by themselves they can do it mm -hmm. right exactly exactly mm -hmm. and also learn with others and work with yeah, others yeah, so yeah. i think this kind of teamwork is also essential because there is still this kind of stigma that, you know, if you talk about coder, it's a guy with a long braid who's sitting in a yeah. dark corner and, like, not talking to anybody for, like, 48 hours and yeah. living off energy drinks. But actually, nowadays, if you go to work anywhere, it's more about teamwork. Uh, you know, this kind of co uh, the, the, uh, go, go coding or, like, with somebody else, it's really common. So, like, it's essential that you learn to work with other people and... Yeah. You, you understand their different kind of work methods or how you start planning and all these kind of things. So I think this is also really important. So yeah, the first part is learning to learn different languages. Yeah. And the second part is learning to work with other people. The second year and government is also supporting this project. So are there any new companies who are becoming a part of this project? Like the companies who are ready to hire the students who would complete this program? Uh, so yeah, we still have some uh, some that we're in ne negotiation with, okay. also some companies from abroad. But I would say that when it comes to like, the Estonian startup scene, we, we have it quite well covered. Mm -hmm. So, you know, everybody from like uh, Wise and Boyd and the Verif and like all uh, Pipe Drive, so the unicorns. But also we have some more traditional uh, economy like SAB, LHV, Lekage, that's a huge company in Itagaruma. So there's like a very big variety of different kinds of companies who are behind the school, yeah. who are supporting it, and who will be the future employers. Okay. Uh, just one question. I just want to ask it for like people like me. I'm working full-time. Let's say someone at my age or my state uh, working full-time wants to do this program. Let's say they get selected. You think it's doable? Like the time that you guys require uh, to, for, from the student to put into this, you think it's doable? It's definitely doable. It's mm -hmm. not easy. I'm yeah. not going to sugarcoat that yeah, in that sure. sense. But uh, we have people who are working full time and they're doing it on the side. Mm -hmm. But I think it, it depends a lot on your motivation. Mm -hmm. If you're willing to put in the time and effort and also understanding that it's a, it's not easy. But it's the thing like uh, if you're willing to, okay, I'm going to focus on this like uh, a year, a uh, year and a half, two years. Uh, if you have more motivation that uh, I can do it faster. Like, you know, like you have the goal that, okay, I want to finish it as soon as possible, mm -hmm. then that's also doable. But I think, yeah, like age is definitely not a factor. Whatever you're doing in life at the moment is no factor. If you're interested in the field and if you're willing to put in the time and work hard, definitely it's doable. Okay, right. So now we have spoken a lot about this program now and you have done uh, the admissions or selection for this year as well. Uh, we have still one selection sprint coming up in September, but uh, we're almost done. Yeah. Viewers who are going to watch this discussion, I want them, I want them to know about the timelines for the next year. So if a few of them want to apply for it next year, they know the timeline. So if you can just break that down for us. So our goal is that we start with applications somewhere in February or March. Okay. Definitely follow us on social media. That's the easiest way to see how all the deadlines. Yeah. And we're planning to have a selection sprint, one in the spring, one in, uh, in the summer, and one in the autumn. Okay. So everybody's able to plan accordingly, with their, either with their vacation or what the other things in their lives that they might have. And most probably the next class will also start uh, late autumn, so like October or November next year. Okay, so from February onwards, they, if anyone is interested, they can keep an eye mm -hmm. on your social media. 
and then they can uh, do the program or do the test whenever it's available. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right. Okay. Can you also tell us about uh, about uh, your social media handles so I can put it on the screen later on and then uh, people can start following you? So yeah, uh, both Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Just look for Code mm -hmm. So it's Code in Estonia. So K O D mm -hmm. and uh, slash Yuthi. So mm -hmm. the name of the city. Okay. And you can quite easily find us. Cool. Thank you very much, Kari. It was really interesting. I really wanted to ask a lot more questions, but I think I have the basic uh, information that I wanted to get out of this discussion. I'm sure I'll, I'll reach out to you in the next few months before the, the next section video starts uh, to get more information and spread the more positive words. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much.